Hey, it's Noel Powell with creationeffects.com. I'm releasing this totally free collection of custom 3D shapes for After Effects. I think these will come in really handy if you do any motion graphics work because shapes are a pretty essential part of that. And really, I think After Effects should have had something like this built in. But as you probably know, if you want to work with 3D objects in After Effects, you've got to switch the render engine. And when you do that, you have to give up a lot of other features and effects that just won't work in that renderer. Well, these shapes are built in After Effects in the classic 3D renderer. So they'll work in all of your projects and they're made with shape layers, which means you can give them a stroke and manipulate their paths and also scale them up as much as you want and they won't lose resolution. Each shape has a lot of customization options using controls uh, that you can keyframe so you can make unique animations. So I'll leave a link in the description where you can download it for free and let's get right into it. Uh, this will be a quick tutorial on how to use the shapes and we'll take a closer look at the sphere and cylinder shapes which are improved versions of the 2D sphere and cylinder effects that are built into After Effects. These work more like regular 3D objects and they cast shadows and everything. All right, this is a template, which is an After Effects project file. So whenever you need a 3D shape, just import the file into the project that you're already working in by going to File and Import and File. And there's just this one comp named 3D Shapes, so open that up. And you'll see some instructions here. Uh, there's some important notes here about how to duplicate shapes. But I'm going to show you all of that, so we'll just hide that instructions layer. And there are 11 basic shapes here, and you can actually create more shapes from these uh, by deforming them or by adding sides. Notice how their colors correspond to the colors of the layers down here. So if I want a dodecahedron shape, I can just come down and look for the blue layers down here. And the very top blue layer is just this title layer. I don't need that one. So I'll just select the next one, which is the dodecahedron control layer. And I love that name, by the way, dodecahedron. And it, a lot of these really have amazing names, like cuboid, parallelopiped, are you kidding me? I mean, well done, whoever was in charge of naming the shapes. Anyway, I got my control layer selected, and I'll shift select the last blue layer and then I can just copy and paste these to my comp. Now, when I select that control layer, uh, you can see our 3D gizmo appears. And this is just a null layer, and all the layers are parented to it. So we can manipulate the shape with this. And uh, if you look in the effect controls panel, while that control layer is selected, we've got all the customization controls. And these are going to be a little different for each shape, but uh, a few things to point out here. First of all, notice how the gizmo is in the center of the shape by default, but uh, we can change that with this drop-down menu. So we can change it to the bottom, and then the shape's anchor point snap to the bottom of the shape, and uh, the shape will move and scale from that anchor point. And depending on the shape, there might be other options, like uh, you can bring the anchor point to the edge or corner. And of course, uh, you can adjust the color and the width of the stroke if you want or you can push out the sides like this. And if you want to get real creative, uh, you can expand these shape layers and expand the content section and go to add. And then you can add any of these shape effects to do stuff like add a gradient or uh, wiggle the paths. Um, but unfortunately, you won't be able to add a lot of the normal effects like a fractal noise effect to these uh, because they don't work the same on shape layers. Okay, I need to go over an important step if you want more than one instance of a particular shape. So if you wanted two dodecahedrons, you'll have to do this step or it won't work. You just rename the control layer before you copy and paste it. So you can rename it to anything. Uh, I'll just add a two. So this becomes dodecahedron two. And now I'll copy all the layers together and paste them. Or if you want to just duplicate a shape in your comp, you can copy one of these shapes and then rename the control layer of that shape to something unique. Um, I'll name this one three. And then I'll paste the shape that I copied. 
simple enough. But if that shape has a little star or asterisk in its title, and there are five shapes here with an asterisk, the polygonal prism, the parallelopiped, the cone, and then these two pyramids. With these, you have to rename all the layers in the shape before you copy and paste a second instance of that shape into your comp. So the first time, you can just copy these layers as they are. The second time, rename them all. So I would just add a two to all of these. And then copy and paste them. One more thing to show you before we look at the sphere and cylinder. Uh, four of these shapes say choose number of sides. So for example, this polygonal prism has octagons on the end, so it has eight sides. But we can go to the controls, and we've got this uh, number of sides control here. So we can set it to something like three sides, and now we have a triangular prism. And we can just delete those extra layers uh, because we only need the three side layers. Or if you want to add sides, we can enter the number of sides here, and then just duplicate our last side layer as many times as we need to match that number. And it's the same process with these three shapes down here. Uh, these, are, these are actually all just the same pyramid shape. Uh, the only difference is the number of sides. All right, the sphere and cylinder are really 2D effects because After Effects can't do curved surfaces in the classic 3D renderer. But I've modified these to make them work uh, more like true 3D objects. So they have a control layer uh, like the other shapes, um, so we can move them around with the, the 3D gizmo. But uh, they're not vector-based like the other shapes, so to scale them up without losing resolution, you can just use the, the controls instead of the 3D gizmo. Also, the cylinder is a 2D layer, and you can see that because it doesn't have the 3D cube icon here. Now, After Effects has this rule about not having 2D layers in between your 3D layers because it prevents the 3D layers from interacting with each other in the right way. And you can see here, our 3D sphere layers are at the top, and our 3D floor layer is at the bottom, and then we've got this 2D cylinder layer in between them, and that's a no-no. And you can see we don't see a shadow for our sphere. But if we move our, our cylinder up here, so that all the 3D layers are grouped together, then we can see our shadow. So it's something to keep in mind. Keep your 3D layers together and then keep that cylinder either above all of them or below all of them. And you can also use the controls to change the angle of the lighting or they have a checkbox to use a 3D light layer as their source of light. Uh, just be sure you rename the light layer. So to use a light layer on the cylinder, it has to be named Cylinder Light. And for the sphere, name its light layer Sphere Light. Additionally, the cylinder and sphere have this extra shadow layer to cast a shadow. So I've got this scene set up with a floor and a light, and my shapes are kind of floating here. Uh, I'd like to put these shapes on the floor and then cast a nice shadow from them. So first I would put their anchor point at the bottom of the shape. And now I can look at the position of my floor and see that its, it's Y position is at 800. And then I can just go to my shape control layers and enter 800 for their Y position. And they'll snap in place. And we can see some shadows, uh, but they don't look quite right yet. Uh, you see that it, it doesn't line up with the base here. If I select my cylinder shadow layer, you can see uh, the outline of this 2D shape that is casting the shadows. It's actually a rectangle and uh, with some oval shapes at the bottom and the top to cast a more rounded shadow like a cylinder would. I can even increase those ovals uh, with those, this control if I want to. Anyway, we want the shape to be facing our light layer to cast a more accurate shadow. And to do that, we just bring up the orientation property by typing the R key. And I'll open the expression box. Basically, we just have to type in the name of our light layer into this second line of code right here. I'll type point light one. Because that's what our light layer is named. 
And now that rectangle shape will auto orient toward the light. And I'll do the same thing for the sphere shadow as well. If it still doesn't look right to you, uh, you can try this checkbox, which will make the shape auto orient on the Y axis only. And uh, then you can also fine tune the shadow simply by moving that shadow layer around. Just keep in mind that light layers need to have cast shadows enabled and your floor layer needs to have accepts shadows enabled. And also I should click this uh, checkbox so that the, the lighting on the cylinder is controlled by our, our light layer. And the light layer needs to be renamed a cylinder light for it to work, remember? So I'll do that. And our expression updated automatically, so the cylinder is all set. And I'll check the box for the sphere too. And we have this error because uh, the sphere is looking for the light layer named sphere light, but it doesn't exist yet. So uh, what I'll do is duplicate this light and rename it sphere light. And now we've got twice the light, so you may want to turn down the brightness on those. And really quick, if you want more than one shadow, you can repeat that process. Uh, add a new light layer, and I'll move it over here. And I'll duplicate my shadow layers. And on those duplicates, I'll update those orientation expressions with the name of my new light layer. So you can have more than one cast shadows, uh, but the highlights and shadows on the shapes themselves can only come from one light source. All right, that's everything I wanted to show you. If you haven't downloaded it yet, just go to the freebies page at creationeffects.com and you can download it for free. And there's a lot of other cool free stuff there for After Effects, as well as some really unique and fun templates, which has been my business for 12 years. There's Landscaper, which lets you build custom 3D landscape animations in After Effects. And you can make just about any kind of landscape that you can think of, like deserts or beaches, jungles, winter landscapes, swamps, mountains. And it's got a ton of cool nature effects uh, with an automatic sky and clouds for time lapses and water effects so that you can just add custom rivers or lakes or coastlines and it's really easy. Uh, it's a lot of fun and it comes with 30 finished landscapes as well. You can also check out Creation Trippy Effects, which is a huge collection of trippy effects for your footage, as well as custom psychedelic animations. Uh, it's packed with creative effects. And some of the new ones are Terra for creating really nice earth animations, or Solaris for making 3D sun animations, or Shapeshift where you can make some custom mind-bending transition effects, or Infinite Horizon is another perspective bending template where you can just drop in your landscape footage and it turns it into a custom perspective bending 3D scene. Or if you've ever needed insects or fish or birds for your footage or animations, I've got you covered there with flocks and schools and the swarms template for adding custom critters to your shots. Or creation artifacts for turning your footage into animated artwork. And there's a bunch more effects, so poke around the site when you go and download the 3D shapes because everything there is affordable and easy to customize and they're big time savers. That's it. Uh, please like the video if you download the shapes and subscribe to hear when more free stuff comes out.